Chapters 16 through 21 of the Book of Deuteronomy from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Farrar Fenton. The Book of Deuteronomy, chapters 16 through 21. Please note, chapters 20 and 21 are in non-consecutive order. Chapter 16 Regard the harvest month and offer the Passover to your ever-living God, for in the harvest month your ever-living God brought you out of the land of the Mitzrayim at night. Therefore sacrifice as the Passover to your ever-living God a lamb, and in the place which your ever-living God has chosen to fix his name there. You shall not eat any ferment upon it for seven days. You must eat unfermented bread only, for you came out from the Mitzrayim in haste. Therefore you shall remember the day you came out from the land of the Mitzrites, all the days of your life, and nothing fermenting shall be seen in all your boundaries for seven days, and you shall not leave any of the flesh which you sacrifice at the beginning of the evening of that day until the morning. You will not be permitted to sacrifice the Passover in any of the villages which your ever-living God gives to you, but only at the place which your ever-living God may choose to fix his name there may you sacrifice at the Passover, at the afternoon as the sun declines, at the time you came out from the Mitzrayim. So you shall roast and eat it in the place which your ever-living God has chosen for himself, as you turned on that morning and went to your tents." You shall eat unfermented bread with your God for six days, and on the seventh day you shall assemble to your ever-living God. You shall do no business upon it. Count seven Sabbaths from the beginning of putting the sickle to the corn. Count to the end of seven Sabbaths. Then you shall make the festival of Sabbaths to your ever-living God, and enjoy yourselves before your ever-living God you and your sons and your daughters and man and maid-servants and the levite who is in your village and the foreigner and the fatherless and the widow who are among you at the place that your ever-living god has chosen to fix his name in for you must remember you were slaves among the mitzrayim therefore preserve and practice these institutions you must also make yourselves a festival of seven days after the harvesting of your corn and vintage, and enjoy yourselves in that feast. You, your son and your daughter, and your man and maidservants, and the Levite and the foreigner and the fatherless and the widow who are in your villages. You must feast for seven days to your ever-living God in the place that the ever-living may choose, because your ever-living God has blessed you in all your products and in all the work of your hand. Therefore, you must be glad. All your men shall see the presence of your ever-living God three times in a year, in the place he may choose, at the feast of unfermented bread, and at the feast of weeks, and at the feast of tabernacles, and you shall not see the presence of the ever-living empty-handed. You shall appoint judges and recorders for yourselves in every village which your ever-living God gives to you, to control you and to govern the people with honest government. You shall not distort justice, you shall not regard stations, you shall not take bribes, for bribes blind the eyes of the intelligent and pervert the decrees of justice. You shall follow perfect justice, so that you may live and possess the country that your ever-living God has given to you. You shall not plant shrines or any trees at the side of the altar you make to your ever-living God, nor shall you erect for yourselves columns as standards to your ever-living God. Chapter 17 You shall not sacrifice to your ever-living God an ox or a sheep in which there is any defect, anything bad, for that would be an insult to your ever-living God. If there should come out from any of your villages which your ever-living God gives you, a man or a woman who does wrong in the sight of the ever-living by slighting his covenant, and going and serving other gods and worshipping them, or the sun or the moon or any of the hosts of the skies contrary to my command, and it is reported to you, when you hear it, then you should inquire carefully, and if the truth of the thing is confirmed that such an outrage has been done in Israel, 
you shall bring out that man or that woman who have done that wicked thing in the village of the man or woman and stone them to death with stones they shall be put to death on the evidence of two or three witnesses upon the evidence of one witness they shall not be put to death the hands of the witnesses shall be first upon them to kill them then the hands of all the people afterwards you shall thus burn that wickedness from among you if a case should occur among you difficult to decide between blood and blood between right and right and between stroke and stroke an affair of a contention in your gates you shall remove it and take it up to the place which your ever-living god has chosen for himself and go to the priests to the levites and to the judge who may be in your times and appeal and report the matter to the chief judge and act upon the decision which he pronounces you shall not turn from the order that he communicates to you to the right or to the left and the person who acts insolently against the decree of the priest appointed to serve your ever-living god there and the chief judge that man shall die thus you shall burn that evil out of israel and all the people will hear and fear and no longer be contumacious when you arrive in the country which your ever-living god has given to you and possess it and reside in it and say to yourselves let us place a king over us like all the nations who are around you shall only place over you the king whom your ever-living god may choose for himself you shall place a king over you from your brothers you are not permitted to appoint a foreigner over yourselves a man who is not your brother further he shall not collect horses to himself and he shall not take the people back to the mitzrayim because of its abundance of horses for the ever-living has commanded you not to contemplate to return by that way for ever he shall not collect wives about himself nor turn his heart to silver and gold to accumulate them excessively when he is set upon the throne for his kingship there shall be written out for him a duplicate of the law from the book in the custody of the levitical priests and he shall keep it with him and read in it every day of his life so that he may learn to fear the ever-living his god to guard the whole of the commandments of the law and to administer these institutions so that his heart may not rise above his brothers and that he may not turn from its commands to the right or to the left so that he may extend his days in his kingship he and his sons in the circuit of israel chapter eighteen there shall be no share or inheritance to the levitical priests or any of the tribe of levi with israel the ever-living is their inheritance and feeder therefore they shall have no inheritance among their brothers the ever-living is their inheritance as i said to you therefore there shall be decreed for the priests something from each sacrifice sacrificed by the people whether ox or sheep there shall be given to the priest the foreleg jaws and breast you shall give to them the first fruits of your corn also the first fruits of your oil and the first fleece of your flock for your ever-living god chose them from all your tribes to stand to serve to the name of the ever-living they and their children for all time and when a levite comes to one of your villages in any part of israel although he is a stranger there and comes from any village where he formerly lived he may serve to the name of the ever-living his god like all his brothers who are fixed there in the presence of the ever-living they shall eat share and share alike of equal value on account of their ancestry when you enter the country that your ever-living god has given you you shall not learn the depravities of those heathens you shall not take with you your son or daughter to a throwing over a fire to divinations and enchantments or for witchcraft or incantations or inquiry of spirits or foretellers or questioning the dead for the ever-living loathes all these practices and to sweep away all these practices your ever-living god has driven them from before you you must be perfect before your ever-living god for those heathens whom you will drive out listened to cloud makers and to diviners but you must not consequently give yourselves to the ever-living your god your ever-living god will raise up a prophet like me for you from among your brothers after me listen to him you all requested one from your ever-living god at horeb on the day of the public meeting saying 
we cannot continue to hear the voice of the ever-living god nor longer to see this great fire for fear of death when the ever-living replied to me what they have said is good i will raise for them from amongst their brothers one like you and will put words into his mouth and he shall report to them all i command them and any man who will not listen to the messages which he delivers in my name i will drive out from my people but the prophet who shall presume to deliver a message in my name which i have not commanded him to deliver or who shall speak in the name of other gods that prophet shall die but perhaps you may say in your heart how can i distinguish such a message as what the ever-living has not spoken when the prophet delivered it in the name of the ever-living although he was not commanded when the event does not happen then the ever-living has not spoken the prophet has spoken it in his presumption fear him not chapter nineteen when your ever-living god has destroyed those heathen of whom your ever-living god has given you the country and has driven them out and you dwell in their cities and their houses you shall separate three cities to yourselves in the midst of the country that your ever-living god gives you to possess you shall then make roads for your use to these three cities from the boundaries of the country which your ever-living god has divided amongst you so that any manslayer can fly to them however this is the kind of manslayer who may fly there and live he who has struck his neighbor unintentionally when he did not previously hate him for instance one who went with his neighbor to a wood to cut timber and the iron flew from the handle of the axe in cutting the timber or the iron flew from the tree and caught his neighbor and he dies he may fly to one of these cities and live lest the avenger of blood pursue after the manslayer whilst his heart is hot and overtake him owing to the length of the way and deprive him of life before he has been condemned to death for he did not hate before the event consequently i command you to appoint three cities to be provided for yourselves but if your ever-living god extends your boundaries as he promised to your fathers and gives to you the whole of the country which he promised to give to your fathers you shall also attend to all these orders to do what i have commanded you to-day and love your ever-living god and walk in his ways at all times therefore add three other cities beside these three because you shall not shed innocent blood in the breast of the land that your ever-living god has given you to inherit for that blood would be upon yourselves but if it happens that a man hates his neighbor and waits for him and arises against him and strikes at his life so that he dies and then flies to one of those cities of god the magistrates of that city shall send and apprehend him there and deliver him to the hand of the avenger of blood and he shall be killed your eyes shall not pity over him for you must burn out innocent blood from israel that you may prosper you shall not remove the boundary of your neighbor which your chiefs placed to your estate when they divided the country which your ever-living god gave you to possess a single witness shall not be received against a person for any offence or for any sin for every offence that may be committed the evidence of two witnesses or of three must establish it when any one makes a quarrel with a man to do him an injury both the persons between whom the dispute is must appear before the presence of the ever-living and before the priests and judges who may be in their times and the judges shall inquire carefully to ascertain who is the false witness giving false evidence to injure his brother and shall do to him as he intended to do to his brother and burn that wrong from their midst so that when others hear they may fear and not continue to do similar wrong amongst you your eyes shall consequently not pity life for life eye for eye tooth for tooth hand for hand foot for foot chapter twenty one verses one through nine when a corpse is found fallen in a field in the land which your ever-living god gives you to possess and it is not known how killed your chiefs and magistrates shall go and measure to the towns that are round about the corpse to ascertain the town that may be nearest to the corpse 
then the head man of that town shall take a heifer from the herd which has not worked which has not drawn wheels and the head man of that town shall cause the heifer to be taken down to a vale with a constantly flowing brook which has not been cultivated nor reaped and break the neck of the heifer at the brook then the priests of the sons of levi shall approach for the lord your god chose them to officiate and to bless in the name of the ever-living and every contention and every dispute shall be decided by them with all the magistrates of the surrounding towns to the corpse and wash their hands over the broken-necked heifer at the brook and asseverate and say our hands have not shed this blood and our eyes did not see it cover it to the people of israel whom you have chosen lord and lay not innocent blood on the breast of your people of israel then the blood shall be covered for them and you will burn the innocent blood from amongst you for you must practice justice in the eyes of the ever-living chapter twenty verses one through fourteen when you go to war with your enemies and see horses and chariots a people more numerous than yourselves fear them not for your ever-living god is with you who brought you from the land of the mitzrayim and when you are preparing for the war the priest shall come forward and address the people and say to them listen israel you are now preparing for war with your enemies let not your heart shrink fear not nor be startled nor terrified at them for your ever-living god marches with you to fight for you against your enemy and save you the magistrates also shall address the people saying what man is there who has built a new house and not dedicated it let him go and return to his house for fear he should be killed in the war and another man should dedicate it and what man has planted a vineyard and has not reaped it let him go and return to his home for fear he should be killed in the war and another man reap it and what man is engaged to a woman and has not married her let him go and return to his home for fear he should be killed in the war and another man marry her the magistrates shall even add to this address to the people and ask what man fears with a timid heart let him go and return to his house and not depress the hearts of his brothers like his own heart and when the magistrates have ceased speaking to the people then they should appoint officers to the regiments to command the people when you approach a city to war against it you shall propose peace to it and if they will adopt peace and open to you then all the people found in it shall be subject to you and serve you but if they will not accept peace with you but make war against you then assail them for your ever-living god has given them into your hands and destroy all the men by the edge of the sword the women and children however and the cattle and all that may be in the city all the booty you may seize for yourselves for you may use the booty of your enemies which your ever-living god gives to you chapter twenty one verses ten through fourteen when you advance to war with your enemies and your ever-living god gives them into your hand and you take them captive and see amongst the captives there is a beautiful woman and you have a desire for her to take her to yourself as a wife you shall take her into the sanctuary of your house and uncover her head and pare her nails and she shall put off the clothing in which she was captured and reside in your house and weep for her father and mother the space of a month and after that you can go to her and marry her and she shall be your wife but if it then happens that you do not like her you shall free her for life you shall not sell her for money you shall not treat her as a slave because you have degraded her chapter twenty verses fifteen through twenty you must do the same to all the cities afar from you which are not of cities of these nations here but in the cities of these peoples that your ever-living god has given to you to divide you shall not preserve a living breath but devote them the hittites and the amorites and the canaanites and the perizzites the hivites and the jebusites according to the command of your ever-living god the reason is 
so that you may not learn from them to practice all the depravities which they practice against god and thus you would sin against your ever-living god when you besiege a city for a long period warring with it to capture it you shall not destroy the fruit trees by assailing them with the axe for you can feed from them therefore you shall not cut them down for the trees of the field sprang from the ground before you came to the siege however the trees that you know are not trees for food you may destroy and fell and build towers with them against the city which is warring with you until you subdue it chapter twenty one verses fifteen through twenty three when a man has two wives and loves the one and dislikes the other and they bear children to him both the loved and the disliked and the son of the disliked one is the eldest when it comes to the time for his sons to inherit he cannot make the son of his darling the eldest in place of the son of the disliked who is eldest but he must acknowledge the son of the disliked who is the eldest and give to him two parts of all he possesses for he is the first fruits of his love he is justly firstborn when a man has a disobedient and rebellious son who will not listen to the voice of his father or the voice of his mother but disobeys them and will not listen to them his father and mother shall take him and conduct him to the magistrates of the town and to the open court and say to the magistrates of the city this son of ours is disobedient and rebellious he will not listen to our voice he is depraved and drunken then all the people of his town shall stone him with stones and kill and that evil will be burnt out from your breast and israel will hear and fear when a person has committed a crime condemnable to death you shall kill him and hang him upon a tree you shall not however leave him upon the tree but bury him the same day for god abhors the hung consequently you shall not defile your country that your ever-living god has given you to possess the end of chapters sixteen through twenty one of the book of deuteronomy recording by mark penfold